my son, Hunter, growing up, he was just very affectionate, very, very kind and gentle soul. Um, he was an amazing kid. He was well behaved. Hunter was the kind of kid that like a lot of people would want to be like. We absolutely love spending time with our family. Our family did everything together. We vacationed together, we ate together, we played together. I mean, my brothers were my best friends growing up. Always outdoors, always looking for something fun to do. He brought the adventure out in me. <laughs> We call it the Huck Finn life, you know, where he just played on the river and played in the wilderness all summer long. Go camp up by the falls, go to the lake, pretty much anything and everything outdoors. He could find the little things and turn it into some kind of adventurous activity. He was doing backflips off of stuff before I was willing to jump off of that same rock or boat. He was always telling me he wanted to be a, a rally driver in Australia and he wanted to have his own little restaurant called Hunters, you know. He can make you crack up at any time, you know. You never knew what to expect from him, really. We would lock each other out of the house, and one time I had to get ready for work, and I was almost late. So I actually had to pop off my screen to my house and pull him out of the window <laughs> so that I could get in. But we were doing that stuff all the time. My fondest memory of Hunter was actually when we were leaving to go to basic training. And he came up to me, and he wrapped his alarms around me, gave the biggest hug, and he said, I love you. He, he invited me on the camping trip. I told him I couldn't make it, but I told him, you know what, I'll, I'll see you right when you come back, you know? And I never got to see him. On August 9th, 2009, um, Troy and I and Kylie and her husband were away at a family wedding. We were driving home and my cell phone rang and it was our son, Jaden. And he said, Mom, somebody here needs to talk to you. And it was my captain at work, and he told me that, that Hunter had been in an accident. And I asked him, where was he? And he said he was at the corners. I, rem I remember Troy telling me that there had been an accident and that, uh, that Hunter didn't make it. And the first thought that went through my head is, how could this, this be? This has to be uh, this joke. This couldn't have happened. I kind of just, I broke down right away. I didn't want, I didn't want to believe it. Hunter was a passenger in a car that was driven by a 17-year-old boy who had his provisional license for a very short time. They were on a windy mountain road, and as teenage boys do, they were egging him on to drift around a corner. So he tried to drift around a corner, lost control. And spun around and, and hit a tree, unfortunately right on the passenger side, right in Hunter's seat. And he was killed instantly and everybody else pretty much walked away. I found out shortly after that the driver was messing around. It was his fault that my brother's not here anymore, but he's not a bad kid. He just was distracted. He got distracted by the other kids in the car. He wanted to have some fun. He wanted to be the cool older brother, and that unfortunately ended in a tragedy. Just having your best friend just gone, just taken from you. You'll never get used to that. One thing we never thought to talk to Hunter about was being a good passenger. How to act appropriately and not distract the driver. He was in eighth grade. His friends weren't even driving. There was no reason for me to think that he would be in a car with a provisional license. He would tell me to go fast or go around, you know, try to drift the car around the corner, and we would laugh and we would drive on. Never thought that he would be doing that to a provisional driver, and the provisional driver would actually do it. That's the hardest for me with my son, Thane. It's really hard to raise him with the memory and the love of Hunter that I have. And it makes me proud that he can point out Uncle Scooby in pictures and I've made books of him. I think about it all the time, what it would be if he was still here. <laughs> Every day. We've always been with each other through everything. So to not have Hunter there, was very hard for us because everything that we had been through in life, we were always all there together. It's definitely that missing link that will never be filled. There's this big empty space that has a big chunk of my heart that's not there anymore.
one small, small maneuver can can kill someone. It can take a life. All it takes is that one text that you want to answer to. You know, lose control. Every day I see uh, I see a car driving erratically you know, or somebody not paying attention on the road and it's somebody texting. It's always somebody texting. Both hands off the wheel, looking down, texting, going 70 down the freeway, not paying attention. Is it worth having to text? In the end, it's really not, it's not worth the message. It's not worth that extra few seconds of being home early or wherever you had to be. Just don't be dumb. <laughs> you cannot ever replace Hunter. You will never be able to. Nothing ever prepares you for the death of a child. There's nothing to fix the loss of a child. Nothing at all.